We'll open up the Thursday, April 11th, Northampton Planning Board meeting. We have only one item on the agenda. We always start our meetings with public comment about anything that is not on the agenda. So if anyone has a comment, please let us know. Uh, if not, we'll move to the first item, which is a zoning map amendment to rezone five parcels from the URC <coughs> zone to the central business zone and modifying chapter 156-2 map expansion to include these parcels within the central business architecture district. Um, so we received these electronically. I don't know if folks had a chance to look at them electronically. Um, the five parcels are all generally downtown, which is why they'd be candidates for moving from URC to CV. Um, the five parcels are, do you want me to read them? Sure, I can also put it on the screen yeah. if you okay. want. Okay, yeah. Carol's gonna put it on the screen. Um, the five parcels are 32A-105 on Market Street, 32A-181, Bridge Street, 32A-182 on Bridge Street, 32A-176, and 32A-260 also on Bridge Street. Okay. Anyway. Um, well, you're, you're, what, yep. I mean, 34 just seems like this weird, like, carve out. Yeah. Is it not? So um, I'll show you on the screen, but so it's right next to green is the central business boundary. So that's a parking lot that's commercially used by Joe's as their parking. Mm -hmm. So yeah. technically it's a commercial use, but right. it's zoned residential. Uh, okay. So it does seem odd, but we're just extending the boundary by one parcel. And we just did that as a sort of a cleanup. Okay. Um, since we are in this area of central business anyway, we just looked at where there where it might make sense. And in theory, if if at some point in the future somebody wanted to convert that parking lot into a building, it could be residential. Yes. By, you know, in the right, so it's not precluding any residential. Right, above the first floor in the back, and yeah. there's a lot more development redevelopment potential in central business zoning the versus URC. the URC zone. So let's see. It's not seeming like it's. Oh, okay. So let me just go to this. Try to get connected here.56 Bridge Street, which is on the, um, which is up here right under where it says URC. Um, this is historic Northampton owned property, and then this other property here is the main historic Northampton building, so they which is already, yes, yeah, mm -hmm. already central business. Um, and um, a lot of the conversation revolved around the fact that they need more flexibility in uses and um, for those buildings because they're trying to generate income to support the museum and so that would be allowed in the central business district and also it didn't make sense to have part of their property in one zone and the other part in another zone so, so when you <coughs> say like flexibility like like being like a venue like a commercial venue for example and like hosting a wedding or something like they couldn't do that in urc um, they might be able to do that, but more they're looking at ways to rent the buildings okay. that are not the museum buildings right. for either um, short-term rentals or office or things like that that could generate right. um, some revenue for them to support the services. Mm -hmm. So those two lots um, are 
part of the museum property. And then across the street, there's a dental office that's in the URC. So it didn't make sense to lead to, you know, keep that in urban residential C. And then the, in between the post office and that dental office is this large parcel that's a historic, an historic building. And what is that? Well, right now it's a residence. It is, yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. So, you know, we reached out to all the property owners. The only property owner I um, heard from was um, the owner of Joe's, um, and she was um, fine with the change um, and, you know, had some, we had some questions back and forth, and so she supports the change. Yeah. Um, the other two property owners, the dental office and this house, did not respond to any outreach efforts. Um, they were also notified officially of this public hearing. So I notified them maybe eight months ago mm -hmm. uh, before we put this forward, just to make sure that people were on board. Um, so um, we just feel like this is a little, this is extending the boundaries a bit, but it's capturing uses that are already, for the most part, commercial, except for this one house. But um, the thing that adding it to central business architecture does is that it will help preserve the architecture of that building uh -huh. because of the design standards. Mm -hmm. um, so everything in the green, right? The outline of the green yeah. forward. Is, green is central red. business, right. right. So by adding the ones in red, all of that then will be um, in central business and also subject to the central business architecture That's guideline. Uh, at the top right, there's a green line. Is that central business over there? Um, no, I think that's another zoning okay. boundary it's line. Some fire day, is it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually the fire ninety one. Okay, okay, I just was like, some fire. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no, it just drops off. Okay. Um, so it's another cabin at our window. <laughs> <laughs> so is this? Um, this process that we make a recommendation to city council yes. again? Okay. Mm -hmm. So that would be what, after we have discussion, what right. have you, that's what mm -hmm. we would be doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, it all seems very logical to me. What do you think, Yuri? Okay, what I think is that, I was thinking about that nice building, you saw the building there, right? So, and then it become part of the, the downtown, the district? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and, um, what kind of impact are we causing that building? Well, for the immediate term, I, you know, nothing would change effectively. If someone wanted to um, modify the exterior um, in some way, do an addition that, that was facing Bridge Street, that would trigger a review by the Central Business Architecture Committee. Um, if someone wanted to add a building to the parcel, that would come before the planning board and come to central business architecture. Um, but it, it, unless somebody initiates a change, it really wouldn't do anything. But it does allow even the reuse of the interior in, in the walls. You know, if if someone felt if the owners felt like they needed let's say more income to support renovations in the house, that they there's a lot more flexibility in the kinds of uses that you can um, put the structure um, to because um, central business is just a broader range of allowed uses as opposed to residential. Yeah, parking is easier there, right? Uh, there's there's a no, parking big parking area. And the zoning oh, the yeah, chance would be much easier. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Um, and so if the owner wants to develop housing or or commercial anywhere. yeah so that's not impairment for them right right no and in fact yeah. it makes it allowable whereas in the current condition of the wouldn't allow it yeah oh well wow. yeah um when you say you reached out to like 57 bridge and 69 bridge with this house and then a dental in what form did that take was that I mailed like, notice because oh, we don't have any other right uh, so I mailed them an explanation of the proposed change with a map describing what that would mean for the property and asked for them to contact me to mm -hmm. learn okay. more about right, it right. 
and nobody ever did. Uh -huh. My sense of it is that, generally speaking, it's a benefit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, right. you know, I mean, such a house like that, you're not going to make it uglier because that would affect the the resale value of the house. So, I mean, it's only a positive. Right. Oh, but they can tear it down. Another old school. That's what I could. Yeah, yeah. Before they can, before they can do any part, there'll be an issue. Is there a tax impact at all for the residential home to be in a different district? Yeah. Not in North Hampton. So the the housing, the housing they can they could develop on that portion of fifty seven. Could be something I joke around, but. Something like big like that thing, like very density for housing and building three stories and mm -hmm. as long as go along with uh, the historic mm -hmm. Yep, right. Yeah. So we'll see that. Parking, though. <laughs> <laughs> well that would be under your review for site plan. I mean it's a <clears> large <throat> parcel, so yeah. it's hard to I mean, I think you could do there are probably any number of ways you could design that site to accommodate the uses. Can you play <laughs> it some some way make them compromise to design to designate parking <laughs> or <is that? laughs> Now that I'm back from Amsterdam, you know, I have like a zero tolerance policy for like us mandating more surface parking. No oh I they should it's it's like, like, just if they it's a mixed use and then the commercial come in and cannot use the residential so <laughs> that's a big issue. I'm sorry. Can't breathe. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we're downtown. Yeah. So can we uh, have we'll move to close public down. comment. What's that? We move to close public comment. Are we ready to close public comment? I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm good. I, it makes yeah. sense. Is everybody's been contacted. Okay. It just it Actually, functionally makes sense. I have a general question. Yes. The I, I think it's a national rather than local historic district that's on Pomeroy Terrace. Where does that? And does that have any impact on historic Northampton and on that historic home at 57 Bridge? The zoning wouldn't have any impact on the historic um, district. Um, it ends, I think, um, at, I don't have the boundary on here, but it's, um, uh, I don't even think the Valley CDC house is in it, which is one, two mm -hmm. up. Um, so it's right around that corner. Yeah. So, so if they, there's two owners, if they, they not give back to you, right? So if they decide to come and say, well, we didn't receive it. So it's okay if you just approve it? Like a, well, know, the like requirement a if for rezoning for a map change is that you notify the uh -huh. property owners of the parcel. Just notify. Right. Okay. And and so, so they got the second notice just three weeks ago for this right. specific public hearing. Mm -hmm. So they definitely and then they'll get nothing and they'll go twice. And then city council. Right. 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 Uh, so there was a motion to close public hearing. Is there a second? Second. Yes. All those in favor? Yes. Anyone opposed? All right. So Sam. Is, okay. I'll make a motion to recommend uh, approval of the zoning map amendment to rezone five parcels from New York City to CB and modify chapter 156-2 map extension to include these parcels within the central business architecture district. Number one, 32A-105, which is 34 Market Street. Number two, 32A-181, which is 57 Market Bridge Street. Number three, 32A-22, which is 69 Bridge Street. Number four. 32A-176 and 32A-260, which are 58 and 66 Bridge Street. Is there a second? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> All those in favor? Anyone opposed? Great. That's good. Okay. Our other business, our first other business is a planting plan amendment for the CE solar installation at the former Willard pit. So this is, we got um, this electronically as well. Yeah. And there is a presentation, is that right? Or there is a, oh, only a. It's up to you. Um, <laughs> so we don't, this isn't a formal hearing, so we don't necessarily need a 
full presentation, but there is an, uh, an applicant or there is a person here who can answer questions should we need to have them. Um, I also have a larger sheet. Can you just say how this is different from the prior plan? Yeah, it so looks like there's you, more planting. If you recall, there wasn't a specific plan um, to, uh, there was a concern by the abutters on this side of the parcel that because of all the trees that yes. were taken down, yes. there was then a gap. Yeah, visual, and um, yeah. so people who abutted on this um, southerly side mm -hmm. could see. Um, and the consultants had not put together a, um, a specific plan to address, you know, particular locations on the ground that would, um, that could mitigate those for those property owners. There just wasn't the time and um, they had pledged during the hearing that they would definitely create a landscape buffer yeah. to address mm -hmm. those concerns. Mm -hmm. So you all had the permit condition that said that before they start, they'd have to meet with the neighbors, mm -hmm. come up with a plan, and then have it resubmitted to you all. Okay. So in the intervening time, they've met with the um, abutters and staked out, you know, figured out exactly where these specific species of trees would go to sort of fill those voids. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the, I actually, the neighbor, um, the most affected neighbor, I think, um, was in City Hall earlier tonight at the time, um, um, confused, but I talked to him. He's totally happy with his plan. He had already emailed me and said that it's fine. They worked with um, CED and the uh, landscape um, consultant. And um, he just thought he would um, come tonight, but when I told him, you know, he didn't ha I couldn't tell him exactly what time it was going to be on. I said he, it wasn't necessary for him to come, and he was fine not coming. Okay. So he was fine with it. And the others, I haven't, you know, heard anything negative about, but I know that there was a meeting. So, great. All right. Questions? All right. Comments? I actually have a question. Can you tell us just about how the meeting went? Well, <clears throat> Yeah, uh, for the record, Mike Dagnan, Milan and McBroom. Um, so we met both us and uh, representatives uh, from Con Ed Edison, sp specifically Steve on uh, met with both the butter, or we met with the most effective uh, butter, which is 34 Lady Slipper, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we interacted with them numerous times. Uh, we actually went through several revisions of the plan um, to appease their concerns um, because, and I actually have it on a flash drive, I, I do have a couple of photos, but um, there's a berm um, that actually runs across that southerly side of the property and one of their concerns was as a result of the clearing is that they had basically a clear view of the entire parcel. So we worked with them to strategically come up with this, you know, the planting plan, um, as well as the height of the trees to ensure that um, once everything is in place that, you know, they'll have effective screening from the facility. And, you know, one of the concerns that they had was, you know, what was going to be the instant gratification uh, once everything was planted. And we said, you know, we're trying to be reasonable um, in the height of the trees. Um, I believe most of them are going to be five to six feet high uh, when they're planted. Uh, the white pines that are going to be planted along the rear, um, those are actually going to be higher. Those are going to be seven to eight feet high. Um, and in addition, one of the other modifications to the plan was they were concerned about trespass um, across the rear of their property. So that's why, if you notice, um, there's there's a bunch of shrub plantings um, that were placed there as well. So, you know, there was quite a bit of back and forth. Um, a week and a half ago, we actually met with them in person to present the final plan, and, and they appeared to be happy with with the changes. So, thank you so much thank for doing. Well, it looks like. A very ample amount of planting. Seems like, yeah. yeah, and between the shrubs and the seven to eight footers yeah. in the back. And if it's been vetted by the neighbors, right. the applicant did what no they said they were going to do. Yeah. So I'm happy with that. Great. Okay. Make a motion to close follow up. Yes, 
Second, Sam. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? Any other motion? Okay, motion to approve the planning plan amendment for CED solar installation. Former Wheeler, Pete. Second, Mark. All those in favor? Yeah. Anyone opposed? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate Thank it. you so much. Our next other business is a more not a hearing, a more open discussion or brainstorming um, related to zone, some zoning changes uh, to the URA district to allow two family housing by flight. And we received um, comment from someone who served on the housing partnership about this by email. So if you had a chance to read that. Terrific. Um, he wrote in support of the two family by right. Again, it's expanding options for people um, in terms of their their housing. So, so um, this uh, uh, just a little bit of background <laughs> um, because it's um, this comes after several years of conversation about doing math changes for URA. Some of you were on the board and some of you were not. I'm just flashing this in front of you because the purple represents the urban residential A districts. Um, this is, um, sorry, this is downtown um, here, the pink, mm. and the orange is urban residential C around it. Um, and then the yellow is urban residential B. So this is going out Elm Street basically into Florence Center here. So there's URB surrounding Florence Center. Um, but in between, and sort of most particularly, there's a, there are two little pockets of urban residential A in the Round Hill neighborhood. So sandwiched literally between a URC zone and a URA zone are those two little um, flex. Um, and then down here off of Elm Street is um, Ward Avenue, and maybe it's part of Kensington and Dryad's Green, or mm -hmm. Urban Residential A, they back up to the river, but everything else around it is B. Um, this is Child's Park, and this is sort of between Child's Park and Jackson Street School. So, and then we've got Florence here, and then Leeds up here. So a number of times we've come back and talked about how do we want to start tackling URA? Does it make sense to have a URA, particularly in the context of downtown? This goes back to our Sustainable Northampton plan in 2007, where we were sort of methodically trying to address each of the zoning districts, and we always said, we're going to come back to A, we're going to come back to A. And we haven't yet. And so um, we decide, we know that we need to do that. <laughs> but so what we want to to float with you all now is sort of um, maybe a slightly different way to approach it um, and that is to actually allow two families by right um, in all the residential districts so even SR and RR um, and the reason why there, there are a couple reasons for that. One is we've had decades of experience with allowing accessory dwelling units throughout the entire city, including RR and SR. And the difference between a two-family and accessory dwelling is that for an accessory dwelling, it can't be bigger than a certain size, 900 square feet, and an owner has to live in one of the units. Um, and we've had people take advantage of accessory dwellings and um, they've been successful. We have had no complaints from people about others who have built accessory apartments. So <laughs> the idea is, since we've had success with that, you know, what's really the difference between a two family and a single family with an accessory dwelling, except for the size restrictions and the ownership? Yes. Yeah. Is the accessory um, dwelling attached or detached? I can't remember. Yeah. It can be both. It can be both. But it requires, uh, it's by right without needing any permit if it's attached. And if it's detached, oh. it requires a special permit for the Zoning Board of Appeals. Oh, okay. So, um, but, but then, like an 1100 unit, 1100 square foot unit, that's no longer accessory. It's bigger. That's no longer accessory. But then in 2013, we changed the zoning for B and C 
to allow detached principal structures on a parcel that um, wouldn't necessarily be an accessory dwelling. It could be bigger than 900 square feet. So we've already then for the last six years allowed people to do small cottages mm -hmm. or other units on the same parcel as an existing but they still have to building. meet all the setbacks and all that stuff. Still have to meet the setbacks and everything. Yeah. So that's sort of the foundation for them thinking, well, maybe as an equity issue, we need to just say, let's allow two family by right mm -hmm. with the same minimum lot size as a single family. But um, that gives even a little bit greater flexibility for people to have slightly bigger units um, and still keeping the parameters of site plan for detached or special permit. I think the way this is drafted is site plan for a detached unit because that's the same criteria we have now. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's attached, then it's by right. And then the only caveat I would say is we're thinking that maybe we need to think about more specific design criteria mm -hmm. so that we're not so we don't see these large massings you know to add a second unit to a single family house so um, that I realized when I I was just sort of throwing out <laughs> concepts at the on the last part on the last page about design criteria that had been used elsewhere that might be applicable to think about in Northampton so this is completely just concept thrown out on paper to start the conversation. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, the other piece that we're um, um, talking about or thinking about in terms of design is maybe going to our consultants who've been working on the form-based code for downtown Florence and downtown Northampton yeah. to maybe come up with some concepts for design criteria for those two families. So just um, put together something yeah, um, to help us think about that. Mm -hmm. um, so um, this is just the beginning of sort of thinking about what it would be like to just say across the board, what, what's wrong with two families? You know, it will it'll allow some modest infill, give some people some flexibility takes down the barrier for um, and the permit threshold for, for doing these um, units because right now and typically if you're going to add a unit and it, it means that you're building more than 2,000 square feet on a property that's going to trigger planning board review so this gives a little bit of flexibility there on top of that though um, we think it's also important to address the really anomaly URAs like on Round Hill, um, this is cr the back side of Round Hill, so it's really hillside and I guess the back side of Round Hill. Um, and then Langworthy is down there, and then Ward Avenue, and also Woodlawn across from Child's Park, which mm -hmm. backs up to URB. So simultaneous or in parallel with the text change to allow two families, the ward counselor is interested in also pursuing these map changes. And to so to start on the map changes, but start with the ones that really are anomalies yeah. in, right. in the city. Um, so what would, if I live on Ward Avenue, what would the pushback be? I don't, I like, you know, URA, don't take URA away from me. So uh, 10 years ago when we tried this, the pushback was, we don't want renters in our neighborhood. And um, even though you can do an accessory dwelling, mm -hmm. and you could do that 10 years ago. Um, and I, I know I've heard from, previously from a resident in Langworthy, who I don't think lives there anymore, said that you the city can't change the zoning to allow two families because our covenants don't allow two families for that little street that was covenant? created. Well, when it was originally built in the 1962 or no. something, yeah. the oh. developer said, thou, thou shall not have two families. Yeah. And so but the, those run out, those yeah. expire. Yeah. I was going to say, um, those like carry on for a while. <laughs> no, they don't. Yeah. They don't. <laughs> so, but, but that was the argument um, from one of the property owners. But at the same time, 
effectively it doesn't really matter. If the zoning allows something, it would really be a private matter for someone in that neighborhood to, right. to sue, the sue, or, no, sue the, a neighbor who's trying to do a two-family yeah. and say, you know, but I'm not sure anybody would do that 50 years after. Right. So, but so that was so primarily the, still may be pushed back. There still may be pushback. Can I, so uh, maybe you can, I, I'm thinking of like I have these two really cute, uh, I guess you call them capes, like net thousand square foot capes. Mm -hmm. And they actually have fairly wide lots. Mm -hmm. um, so conceivably I could like tear that, I could like tear down the roof and add another story and put in Two bucks, mm -hmm. and the neighbors certainly wouldn't like that because all the other, every other house on the street is a cape, and you know. But but you could do that as a single family home too. To, to, a, to add it to right. you yes, could add yeah, a second right, story, yes, but, right. and B, you're allowed to do an accessory dwelling anyway, in, within right. any single family home right now. Attached Good. or detached. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. So really this so would just be saying size of yeah. the cape. Right. Firing. So so there's really the only real change is that you could go beyond nine hundred square feet for that yeah. second mm -hmm. unit. I see. I mean it's interesting. I I love it. I mean I love the idea of not us not having full on single family. Pretty exclusionary, but it's um yeah. So it, it's just interesting to like to keep separate the, the form versus the use. You know, like there's like we should be as sort of expansive about the use, and then if there are considerations for form, we just figure out what those are and go from there. But but the use, yeah, we sh we should be as expansive as we can given housing needs. I guess I. I don't push back. I, I'm not, I mean, I, I guess there's two things. One, it doesn't sound like, in reality, it makes much difference because you could do what you wanted to do before. Um, I, I just, I think like much of this, like I'm just reading like this letter and like some of the, some of the, the logic behind, behind, you know, adding multiple more more duplexes is you know it's supposed to decrease the cost of housing it's not going to decrease the cost of housing it literally just leads to more expensive housing because the cost of the cost of building a structure is the cost of building a structure and so it doesn't unless you're giving up government money there is not a lower cost to there's not a, a lower rental cost ever <clears throat> Well, except that people might have the large homes that can't convert them to two units now, or maybe. And why, so, why couldn't they do that? I'm just, I'm not trying to. I'm just because saying. Because there are in urban residential A, rural residential, and suburban residential, we don't allow two families. Okay. So if you have one of these big homes, like the one that was in right. the zoning, okay, and that happens to we allow multifamily in that district, but there are those large homes yeah. in other districts, yeah, okay. right? Yeah. The other piece of it is, maybe you just need a little bit of an addition to create enough space and you're combining with your existing house and a minor addition that the end could allow you to create a second unit. And that's a low cost way of adding another unit to the inventory. So there's no guarantee that the rental rate will be lower, but to the extent that individuals are able to do that for themselves, it's going to add housing stock to the market that may be more market rate affordable than coming in from the ground and building brand new two units. Well, the more rentals you have, the more the cost gets driven down, as you know. I mean, our rentals are always full because there's not a lot of housing. Yeah, the, the, more housing you, the demand is high, so if people well, do do some secondary well, units... To me, I, I, I think this is... A, I'm, I'm perfectly okay. I mean, the... I will ignore the what I, in my mind is faulty logic, but you know you want to have people want to allow from 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 
for that expansion, there, d there does need to be some very strict design rules because it's 100% not fair to someone who bought a house in a neighborhood that is single family homes, that they have a beautiful image that is perfectly inclusive of, of other families. Mm -hmm. And their image is a, a single family home, the backyard, the kids playing, blah, 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 blah. And of course, they need to understand that it's perfectly okay to have multi-units in their, in their neighborhood as well. But they, should, they do not need to be put upon by just allowing anything, like any type of, you know, suddenly it's, uh, to make this cheaper, I'm gonna put some white vinyl siding on and uh, some replacing windows and call it a day. <laughs> you know? so I think that uh, thing from the form-based consultants, that would right. be interesting. That would be really yeah. helpful. So yeah, so the only thing that, the, the, what I wanted to do tonight is just sort of present what we're thinking, and obviously it's not ready for prime time because yeah, yeah. we're still waiting for design. But just um, make sure that, you know, you, you were part of the conversation because we've also been talking a long time about making these URA zone changes. Mm -hmm. So we feel like we really need to go back to that and, um, and think about how we can be more equitable in providing housing right. across the board. The other thing is people at the time, just as a reminder, Mark probably remembers, is that when we were addressing B and C and coming off the heels of sustainable Northampton, the pe people in B and C said, well, don't forget about A yeah. because we all <laughs> want to be right. treated yeah. you know, equally. They're part of our neighbors too, so. Um, what is it? Meaning that um, the if the people in urban residential B were taking the brunt of the changes for new infill development, they wanted to make sure they spread the wealth from out of the city, so that the people who lived in URA would also uh, have right. that benefit of it. So, uh, is that is that that area they were pointing? Woodland is the one uh, from Child Park. Yeah, and then you. On the other side is. So this is Child's Park here, and then north, is that what you're talking about? Or to this yeah, side? Yeah, it's just because of, I'm trying to visualize how the, the mix of housing there. Because yeah. I have this, you know him probably, um, Michael de Pasquale, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He has that very modern mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. <laughs> and you have to the right, if you face the house, you face more stylish one, a bigger one with a. But as you go to the left, it's not as much. So I don't understand if that's that kind of area, I don't know your argument about it because it's way changed in terms of style or where they're putting, putting that. Well, I, don't, I guess I'm not speaking of a specific place. I mean, I was just- I No, was I just wasn't single, 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 single home versus- you know. yeah. And I, I think I would say we certainly, from an architectural design standpoint, I don't think the idea would be to limit the architectural style, but really just make sure that there are architectural elements that um, are um, consistent with some of the residential character in the neighborhood. So, you know. Right. So that you're not, not building, building a big blank, building, like, yeah, or right. big blank cinder block box addition like a big to the yellow, back. A big house. yellow house with like a slanted roof. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, I love that house. <laughs> that would be well, that's, but so those two are two examples of modern houses that are different than the other houses around it. And I would, and I know the planning board's had this conversation before about not wanting to say modern is not allowed, but it's more about, I mean. So my other example is the one up, uh, down the street from that yellow one, which is that rectangular barracks right. that's blue. Yeah. Oh. And I think that is more hideous yes. than the thing with the, with the angle, you know, so, yeah. but that, that kind of, no, no, one, one, no, one, no one seemed to blow up about that one. Right. I always thought that was, no one knew it was going to be It used to be, it came up, it, it, and it was an abandoned, Ice cream shop. Oh, Calvin oh, ice cream, good stuff. <laughs> so they took it all apart, though. It wasn't yeah. like they. Yeah, but, but, but it was like it, it just sort of came up like. Yeah. We we saying. looked at it. We actually looked at it, uh, and we're like, and there was like some question about like, it's like some 
environmental something. So I'm not sure if even that was real or not. It doesn't matter. But uh, I just remember it just because again I had two houses that could see it, <laughs> and just remember it just going like the color like going right, right, right. <laughs> like so weird because it was yeah. like, and I think it was the the trim that like really like it was like like the rest of the house was up there, and they're like, and now we're gonna put. Trip. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's an interesting point because, like, I think it is important for us to keep separate design versus form. Like, mm -hmm. Central Business Architecture Committee gets into the like the nitty gritty of design and like aesthetics and and form of a building is different. Like, it's not the same thing. Like, that's right. that's mm -hmm. a you know broader concept. It's the kinds of things that that you sort of started putting down on paper in terms of massing and breaking things up, but it's it's not getting to that point where we're down in the weeds of what central business architecture would do. I just think we have to remember that yeah. that's, yeah. you know, that, yeah, that these aren't street, aesthetic yeah. design recommendations, <laughs> and these are about the form of our structures, and that's yeah. that's where we stop, and that's, you know, and that's it. Yeah. But I do think that there's something to be said, that if we're allowing such things, and I want to have, I don't want it to just be okay, I want to have buy-in from neighbors is that you know if you it's one thing if you have if you have like for example the house with the yellow the yellow thing they could build that because it was an empty lot they could do anything they wanted because it was an empty lot there mm -hmm. and um, and I'm just thinking again on Wood Woodmont it's a beautiful street and you've done and the houses sort of work together and it's you know, it's a special street in our in our in our town. Um, that there is a, allowing allowing a change, like uh, you know, turning it into multi you know, multi family properties or duplexes. Uh, I think that there's a responsibility because, unfortunately, our society has lost the ability to think about what our neighbors think as an important as an important value we as a, we as a board have to make sure that they do it you know i mean it's the type of thing where yes i have the right to put up a big purple neon but should i no i shouldn't because my neighbors would find it hideous and i should think about my neighbors <laughs> You well, know, because but, because uh, that's what we as a society, where we have to have peace and love and respect our neighbors in all ways. Yeah, it's a gross part of our society that somehow we have lost the ability to think about what our neighbors want. But don't you in our in our demand right. of in, of but, individual include individual right. specialty? But like, don't we, you think too that there is something about like. It's okay for us to to let people know that like everything changes. Like you buying like a little cape in Ward Seven, like that's not like time doesn't stop. Like you know we can't like our job is not to like pick a moment in time in the city of Northampton and say like this is what it looks like because it used to be a bunch of forests. Like you know I mean we it yeah. developed and like everything is like I I totally agree with you about like respecting your neighbors and being part of a, a community, but there's a balance between, you know, we saw it with the last hearing with Trumbull and, you know, kind of some neighbors not wanting that, but it's like, yeah. like I think I think we have to find a balance between, you know, suggesting we can protect exactly what is on and, certain and we, and we, and without, That's a perfect example, that we actually did that. We did say, yeah. listen, you're gonna have to put right. in these architectural Whatever the uh, the, the hierarchy, yeah. No, and, hardy you know, and, and we went, and we wanted board. and we wanted Hardy back. For, you know, I mean, that's yeah. that's my that's my point. My yeah. point is no, not saying you know, listen the the windows they need to be five and a half inch. You know, the doors right, right, right. five and a half inches, right. and you know, and right. every color yes. is okay as long as it's yeah. like black. You know, yeah, like, yeah. you know, that's, <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. We, we went to form where we stopped and right. going to design where it says you're, you know. Front door's got to be facing the street. It's got to have a little, a little porch and a roof above it. Whatever. Yeah. If you're going to have windows, you know, you can't have a big blank wall. If you're right. going to have siding, it needs to be 
uh, comparable to the siding up and down the street or whatever. Or, yeah. You know, um, so I think you can you can start the conversation. You can you yeah. know, push the conversation without telling them exactly what they need to do. Right. And it will some, never be color. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, not allowed. You can't write that. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> if you do that, you can keep some pattern, right? I think that. You can come up with like well, if, we did, if we did that though, then Woodlawn would have a problem because they're the only ones that have cedar. Uh, I don't know what you call it. It's not clap. It's uh, almost like board and batten, but it's horizontal, and not mm -hmm. vertical. Mm -hmm. So that's the modern house there. Yeah, and it's. I think. It's, I mean, it's nice. It's I mean, it's, mm. it's great. Yeah. I mean, it's and they have the stucco, which does actually tie into the house to the left, which is yeah. more kind of Hansel and Gretel issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they did kind of tie in the element of that, but they did push the envelope with the yeah. siding, and I think yeah. it looks fine. I mean, yeah, yeah it's yeah. totally different. Because why? Why is that? A small house, okay, well, the side that was before, and why they kept was just one wall. Or, and they're a good friend of us, my, my father now, but you just discussed something about that, right? They really changed the switch for that box thing and with the style, right? By the way, it's very nice inside. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they did it. So, I don't know. All they were asked about was to keep a wall or something they have to keep and they kept, kept a one that garage way. wall I don't right so that it's a run so that's right so yeah kept that one wall I remember that so 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 I mean it is stuck away to change does right? it not fit the neighborhood huh does it not fit the neighborhood I'm sorry does it not fit the neighborhood I mean it doesn't affect no, what, I think. what is it our, that's the modern house on Woodlawn. Yeah, so architecturally, right. you'd say no, it doesn't. Yeah. But it's but it's. But from a it, use well, of form, yeah, it's yeah, really yeah, well it's done. Another so the thing, thing. But you're, yes, but you're so that modern house on Woodlawn to some could be the purple house on on Prospect. Yeah, yeah. you know, and so who it, it's. Yeah, so. The difference that I think the more people respond to that house than, than this one. But, oh yeah, uh, but, but, but we can't point tell them. That, yeah. But that's my point. Right. I mean, we always start doing it, and um, so it sounds like though you'd like to see what um, we come up with for yes. possible. Maybe should have a caveat that says if you can yeah. afford to do the oh. outside of your house in mahogany, oh. then, then it's okay. <laughs> uh, I have another question, just like a little clarification. <laughs> So like, we have like a, in like a two-family conversation, we've used the word renters a lot. Does this preclude people from turning a two-family into condos? No, okay. no. There's nothing in the zoning so that, that says, says they would be renters versus owner-occupied condos per se. Right. Like the, the only uh, thing that that was the only um, uh, the only uh, place that the zoning speaks to ownership is for that deep for the accessory dwelling unit okay. currently. That, that an owner has to live on the property either in the um, mm -hmm. accessory or right. in a principal. Okay. And that's it. Otherwise, okay. it's. Yeah. What was the reasoning behind that? So, the concern again was renters. So, the idea was if you had an absentee <coughs> landlord, and, and the, uh, the idea to allow it everywhere in the city was so that if, if there was an owner on the property, there would be a greater likelihood. The idea was potentially there's a greater likelihood that they would care for the parcel as a single family home mm -hmm. and and uh, as opposed to um right. if both units were rented do they not have the ability so we have a property in birmingham michigan and in birmingham michigan <coughs> um you're allowed to have you're allowed to rent it but they literally inspect our house every two years I mean, wow to the to the T. I mean, it's not, honestly, it gets annoying. But but the point is, is that every house in that neighbor, in that place, yeah. unless you live in it, I mean, you can live in it and it can fall down on your head. But, but if you it, rent it, but if you rent it, it it has to be. I mean, they check yeah. they check the furnace. <coughs> yeah. They do a thousand things. Is that not allowed in Michigan or Massachusetts? I have no idea. Ask the yeah. wrong person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 so, do we have to do anything formal? Like, no. or we just start saying just yes. We like yeah. the idea. Yeah, yeah. We'd like to see some form. Yeah, kind of have a sense what. Right. Can do. 
Yeah, so that, I mean, no, I don't need anything at this point. So we'll get to be continued. Is, 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 that that use, I'm sorry, is that use not allowed anywhere? Yeah, if I write, is the uh, URA only, is the only one that it's No, not. in B and C, two family is allowed by right. Everywhere else is not allowed at all. So this isn't just a change for URA, it's across the board. For URA, RR, and SR. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. I think if you have strong design things on there, you like when the time comes to present this to the city who will be able to pass it. Let's call it form and not design so people don't form. Out. Right. form, that's what I meant. Just before form. people say like, I don't have a lattice. <laughs> like, form. <laughs> like, no, no diamond lattice, only square lattice. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> we have an ANR. Oh, look, she said uh, ANR is on the agenda, but it's just one. <laughs> I said that. <laughs> Send it back. Where is it? So this is off of Cardinal Way, and we're probably going to see a couple of iterations of this. Um, so West Hampton Road is down here. Um, Ryan Road is up here. So um, when Cardinal Way was created, there was um, a, an area of wetlands basically along Cardinal Way. Um, and now this property owner that owned a bunch of property down here that fronts West Hampton Road had owned it all the way up along Cardinal Way on this side. Um, their plan is to sell this parcel here and this little sliver that runs down that's sort of left over from when the road was carved up to the pro a property owner abutting here that has frontage on Sovereign Way. So this is not a building lot, and it's not a building lot because there's no, it's a wetland, so it's a right. loosery frontage. You can't get to the parcel from Cardinal Way because of the wetlands. So they're gonna sell this parcel to this property, and then this would remain in the owner's name. Isn't that a wetland too? Just there are wetlands up here as well, and on the site. They're likely gonna to go to the Conservation Commission to see if they can get a permit to Cross the buffer zone to access the property from Cardinal Way. If they get a permit for crossing, then they might come back for an ANR for this piece. But you wouldn't be able to sign an ANR for this piece. This is not buildable because it doesn't have frontage since it's blocked from the street by this wetland. But this one you can endorse because there's a note on the plan that's specifically saying it's going to this property owner that already has frontage on. Um, the parallel street. What are they doing? Just adding to their land, or they yeah. have a build line or something? Well, they wouldn't be able to. Yeah, it's single family home only. I mean, maybe potentially they could build a two family, yeah. <laughs> but there's also a lot of wetland here, so they can't really build that anyway. So they just want it for their property. Hmm. So we're the ANR is just for the lower parcel. For the lower parcel to endorse that because it's it's not a building lot, but it's being transferred. So. It needs to go through this process for that. I recommend endorsing the change to the lower lot as described. Second. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Great. Can I ask a dumb question relative to that? Never mind, I'm not going to ask it. <laughs> Why did they build Cardinal Way at all? If there's. Is it. Does it like. Is this the there's, end of it? No, no, no. There's okay. wetlands at the at the, the first. Okay. I've just know. never been there. I'm yeah. Sorry. First twenty okay. percent, and then after that, it's this all. Will be like California. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I thought I'd just yeah. stop there, and I was like, well, no. I would actually, build this road. Actually, actually on Eaton, yeah. where you come in from yeah. 66, and I think Bert's, that's Bert's Pit Road. There's wetland wetland. <laughs> oh, and, and then, then the middle. in between is all. And then it's okay. surrounded by Parsons Brook too on yeah. one side. Oh. So. I should explore more, huh? Take get out of the city. Maybe if you put it in your car. Maybe if I had two cars, I could drive there. Car, drive around. I could 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 drive